One, two, three. Hi, my name is Goldie Jones, and I am a writer, director, creative director, and what you're about to listen to is a small highlight from my podcast, the Glitch Gestalt podcast. If you like what you hear, you can access the full podcast over on my Patreon page, which I will leave a link to in the description below. And if you want to support the podcast or me as a filmmaker, feel free to join the Patreon family over there and get access to a bunch of other offers and content relating to screenwriting and filmmaking in addition to getting access to the full podcast. So without further ado, enjoy. I mean, I like, I, I think that's saying like kind of where you come up from and like what you're, what you, where you developed your skills from is kind of important mm -hmm. to say like, you know, like I said, like kind of even going further back was that question about, having the insight into the production side of of making short films or feature length films or even just like commercials just any video mm -hmm. production in general like having some insight into the production side uh or post production side kind of helps when you're creating a screenplay to kind of like oh i know that you can translate this well yeah because uh, I, I run into that a lot with my job where it's I, I, I do design and I do development. So it kind of helps when I'm doing my design, kind of knowing that what you can and can't do and how well those designs will translate into you yeah. know, an application. You know, even more than like writing and directing, I always say one of the ways to be a better director or to be a better um, director of photography, a, a DP or a camera operator, is to know how to edit. So like having skills in other parts of the process definitely help. Like it's a lot easier. You're going to get more usable footage on set and develop up, develop out, de de <laughs> develop out your shot list um, during pre-production. If you know how to edit and you know how those things are actually going to ultimately cut together. Um, so, I mean, it definitely, I always recommend that people learn more than just one step of one stage of the process for sure. Um, but almost with writing to a certain extent, I almost want writers to just not even be worried about the practical end of it. Just imagine the world that they want to imagine and the story that they want to tell and let the technical people figure that on the, on the other end. Because so much of innovation in filmmaking is, you know, people want to tell certain stories, like back to Jurassic Park um, that we were talking about earlier, like they wanted to tell a story and they had to develop the technology to make that story possible. And so much innovation in filmmaking has come from like, well, we want, it, we want to tell a story about this kind of creature, show this kind of thing we have to make the technology to make that possible. Um, so to a certain extent, I just want writers to have the freedom of like trust that the technical people, if there isn't already an existing solution to make your script happen, they'll come up with it. Um, so that's my feeling. On yeah, and, and like, it seems like too, you can kind of like, if you do, you're, if you're in that flow state when you're writing, and you can just focus on the story and not get too hung up on like the technicals of like, oh, can this translate? Mm -hmm. Then yeah, like, cause I know when I'm doing stuff that's creative, I kind of have to stop myself from doing that too. Where, well, no, like, cause like, I think it, like that, that flow state is really important. And that's when you're kind of like at your peak creative and just like doing really, really good work. Mm -hmm. And if you start to think about, or like, like again, like how this is going to translate, it just kind of hem like hampers that, state of creativity you can't really get keep that peak level and you're like kind of just like being too self-critical you know like yeah. go back and fix it but if you're in the zone and you're like feeling good and writing or creating something you like any kind of art i think that like you know just keep doing it and not really get too much in your head about it because mm -hmm. you always go back and edit yeah. it yeah absolutely and plus with a script um the script that you sell isn't necessarily going to be the shooting script. So yeah. the thing Lord about <laughs> <laughs> right, 
right? Yeah, um, 14, 14 rewrites and the book's nothing like the movie. Yeah. Except Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt was in the book. Yeah, um, he wrote the book. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, Brad Pitt did not write that book. He did not. <laughs> Max Brooks did. Yeah. Just, just to be clear. Max Brooks. <laughs> who I saw at Emerald City Comic Con one year. Um, anyway, side note, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. You're saying like, that like it's, it's good to just... Oh, right. The script is going to continue to evolve as like pre-production happens. And, you know, it's, it's all an ongoing process. Your script is never finished until the final video is, like the final film is delivered. Yeah, like, until it ships. It gets edited and re-edited and re-edited till you start shooting, and then you probably still have rewrites while you're shooting, and then it's going to get completely re-edited in post-production, and then you end up with the final story that gets shipped out, and maybe there's a director's cut later. Like it's, It is a living, breathing thing. It's not a, a set in stone by any means at any point. Yeah. How do you, how do you, like, have you, have you had like experience with that where something that you wrote and you've handed it off and it's something that you really loved and it's gone through rewrites and it's not necessarily the same product that it was when you handed it off? Like, have you ever oh, had yeah. experience with that? Every single thing I write. Yeah. Every single like, thing. It's pretty, it's, it pretty much never ends up one to one on the other side. No, like Lenore. Like the core story is the same, but so much has changed. So much has changed. Um, like <laughs> it, there have been entire characters and plot lines that are no longer in that script that I'm, I've actually turned into entirely other scripts. Um, but yeah, it's changed so much. It just constantly evolves. Um, and my short film rage that I just did, um, you know, wrote the script, went through rewrites, did the shoot. Initial edit was an 18 minute short film that was pretty one to one with the script. And then I ultimately re edited it into a 10 minute film. And you dropped half of what we had shot out of it and completely like changed the order of the scenes. And it's just completely different. Um, and I think significantly better. So being open to and this is another podcast that I definitely want to do down the line. It's like being yeah, yeah. open to killing your darlings and re-editing yeah. and reimagining. Yeah. Like never lock yourself into the idea of this is the way it has to be. Yeah. Cause that's what kind of what I was, I was kind of asking yeah. about was that like, I know that because of what I do, it's for someone else. Like they come to me because they can't do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But in the end, like it's still, I'm creating something for someone else and I can spend multiple hours making something that I think is beautiful and I can hand it off mm -hmm. and have my client just totally hate it. <laughs> um, I mean, that happens very rarely. And so uh, it's, but, but it does happen. It is something yeah. that you should be prepared to deal with is getting criticism about something that you absolutely love. And you might like said, like, you know, killing your darling or whatever, mm -hmm. like, um, and not even criticism, but feedback, not even just criticism, but feedback and notes, like notes isn't criticism. Notes is an opportunity to improve. 